Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all glory, honor, and praises unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Achakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. This is Brother Kashakwala coming back at you with another lesson. Um, and I wanted to read a quick, a quick uh, little sentence or whatnot, or, you know, two sentences or whatnot from this book called Letting Go. It's by, uh, uh, it's called Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender by Dr. R. Hawkins. All right. See right there. So if y'all want to go out and buy that, this is a very good book. Very, very good book. And I just wanted to read something out of it that um, caught my attention. It says, um, uh, we learn that the answer to the problems we face is within us. All right. By letting go of the inner blocks to it, the truth of our inner self shines forth and the path to peace is revealed okay so i wanted to link this with the scripts okay because the scriptures say things like this first okay we just get better understanding of it as time goes on as the lord quicken us he puts us through the experiences and sometimes by reading some books you can fully understand oh that's what that script was talking about whichever way you find the understanding you find the understanding um of course, and through our, our teachers, uh, um, the apostles and elders. Let me bring this uh, classic script out, though. <clears throat> this is uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, get understanding. Exactly. Whichever way the Lord uh, dictates how you get that understanding, of course, through the, the correct 100% doctrine. But it could be through the teaching. It could be through experience it could be through uh maybe uh, talking to somebody it could be through reading it could be talking to a brother there's very uh, various avenues of getting your understanding under the correct doctrine and however you get that um is a good thing for yourself and one one way um i was reading through here got a better understanding of the scriptures it's like you know the scriptures but the scriptures just keep on getting deeper and deeper each and every day the more you learn so I just wanted to bring this scripture out. Going on to what I had read, I'm going to read it again. We learned that the answer to the problems we face is within us. By letting go of the inner blocks to it, the truth of our inner self shines forth and the path to peace is revealed. Okay? So you're, you're taking away blockades and schisms and a, a cloudy fog that is discerning, uh, <clears throat> that is um, clouding your discernment, clouding your spirit, your spirit to actually um, uh, what's it, emerge out of the flesh that's containing it, okay? So it says, uh, Colossians 3 and 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Let me get this word mortify. In the Greek, um, it's uh, necro, if I'm pronouncing that right. See what Esau says. Strong's G, 3499, Necrao. 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 And it means uh, to make dead, to put to death, slay. Or you wear, it says worn out, so you wear it out. All right? Of a, a impotent old man. All right? It says to deprive of power, destroy the strength of. Exactly. So when you're... Uh, when you're finding the answer within yourself, the first thing you do to get within yourself is shed the layers off. <clears throat> what layers is that? That's conquering your flesh. <clears throat> the thing that's on the outside, the thing that's in the inside is what you want to bring out. That's why you have that word education. Okay. Meaning to bring out the spirit is the thing that you want to uh, want to emerge and show itself. Uh, to people around you, to the occupant, okay? You have to be a spiritual being in this thing. Uh, um, uh, if you're not, um, bear with me, if you're not, then you ain't a true worshiper, okay? You should always strive to bring your spirit uh, spirit to light, okay? So this is uh, John chapter 4, verse 22. It says, ye worship, ye know not what. We know that we worship for our Salvation is of the Jews, verse 23, but the, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers 
shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Okay? Mortify your members so your spirit can emerge. All right? So your spirit can shine and be exposed. Okay? And you being as a spiritual being. Again, mortify the members because you got to settle in your mind being beamed up on a chariot. Lord willing, you're a part of the number. Because what? You, this flesh is not going on a chariot. Okay? This flesh is not going on a chariot. When you get beamed up, your spirit becomes exposed. So make that <laughs> transition easier, okay, by making your spirit come out while you have your time of liberty and grace right now. Okay? It says, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Exactly. A spiritual being. All right? You can't deal with an individual who is always carnal, who is always fleshly. individual who is carnal and fleshly is always worried, okay, has no faith, he's an infidel, doesn't believe in shit, nothing, doesn't even believe a pencil can write on a piece of paper, all right, you want to mortify that, cut it off, wear it out, all right, deprive the power of it, all right, flesh is, is a stronghold on you, and it's a very, it's a big uh, uh, hold, hold back on your spirit, you got to deprive it of its power, okay? So it says, um, so lock it when it goes back. So it says, uh, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon earth, fornication, uncleanliness, or uncleanness, um, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and uh, <clears throat> covetousness, meaning, you know, always you know, looking at the next brother and wanting what he has. It says, uh, which is idolatry. All right, I'm going to get that evil concupiscence. Um, the word concupiscence is a, a, pethum, a pethumea. Let me see, epethumea. And it means, um, it means a desire, a craving, or a longing. Desiring for what is forbidden, a lust. So the evil concupiscence is a bad lust. All right, evil meaning bad times, so it's a bad lust. Get rid of that, okay? A bad lust goes into what's the next word on here, which is the covetousness. All right, coveting one, uh, someone, something that someone has, or coveting something that, uh, coveting someone that someone has. <laughs> okay, that's where that that um, fornication and the idolatry and the adultery comes from. Mainly, it, you know, in its low sense, um, uh, adultery, meaning wanting another man's wife. And that's a big problem Israel has um, as a body, as a whole, okay? It was that adulterous, adulterous as spirit. Also, always wanting what another Jake has. Even in so in the fold, the scripts tell you in what's that in 2 Corinthians, I think, the 10th chapter, not to compare one another, all right? Wanting what another one has, all right? All that needs to be mortified. It needs to be deprived of. It needs to be cut off, all right? Dismembered in order for your spirit to uh, to uh, emerge and shine, okay? I'm going to read this one more, one more again. It says, we learn that the answer to the problems we face is within us. So exactly. And whenever there's a problem that um, arises in your life, more than nine times out of ten, it was because of your ass, I'll say 10 times out of 10, anything that you go through is because of what you did, maybe. I'll say nine times out of 10. It's a lot of times out of 10. <laughs> Let me say that, okay? You may have a problem with a brother. Maybe you need to look within yourself, and maybe you are the problem, all right? You may have a problem with your relationship and your, with your rib. You gotta. You may be not liking how she acts when maybe it's you the reason for the way she's acting, Okay? At the end of the day, you need to reflect on yourself and fix yourself, and that more than likely will fix the problem because your, your, your mind was clouded. Maybe you don't like an individual because he's too prideful. What you may think is him being too prideful from him just being confident. Maybe you're the one who's too prideful, and you need to look within yourself and mortify that, that specific member inside of you and become a better person. All right. Maybe you need to get the moat out of your eye before you talk about someone else having beam in theirs, like it says in Matthew, the seventh chapter. All right. It says by letting go of the inner blocks to it, 
The truth of your of our inner self shines forth and the path to peace is revealed. Exactly. By cutting off of those schisms, cutting off and mortifying those things that hold you back. Therefore, you can reveal the peace and the love and the, and the, and the light that shines within you. Okay? Because there's a lot of darkness that covers and we have to keep fighting each and every day to mortify the members, shedding the old man off, shedding, killing that nigga who you used to be. It lingers. Keep on killing it. All right. Keep on mortifying it. That will bring forth the true spirit that the Lord sh is showing in you and that is working on. And that's what he wants you to do at the end of the day. I don't want to make this lesson too long. I just wanted to be encouraging and hopefully exhorting to Akim. And to uh, to Akim to show, hey, cut off the things that may hold you back. We're in that season of trimming again, even though it's all, <laughs> trimming never stops. But we're in that high season of trimming. Trimming means to prepare, especially going into the Passover, coming in uh, the end of February and going into the March, the beginning of March. This is a high time to where you need to self-analyze your, uh, your within yourself. And make sure you're doing the right things and taking the right steps forward to letting your your spirit shine and come and come forth and, and let everybody, uh, meaning your the Akim around you, show that you're a spiritual individual and you're trying to get close and trying to make that relationship with Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shine. So Lord willing, this was edifying. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Achakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruits to Brother Kasha Kuala from the GMS and the church. Until next time, I want to say shalom.